At some point, when learning what it takes to create good video, we have all been told to shoot at the native ISO of our camera. Well, what if I told you that the pros are not shooting at native ISO and it is actually ruining your footage? I want to teach you a technique that allows you to capture amazing video in any location every single time and what the real secret is to cinematic exposure. Right, let me explain why I say that this method of exposing digital cameras is often ignored by beginners. When I was learning about capturing video and camera settings, I quickly heard the term native ISO. Now, I understood what ISO was and how it worked. What I did not understand is why there was an optimal ISO. So I found myself doing more research. I quickly come across what is now the holy grail term when it comes to cinematic video, and that is dynamic range. Now, dynamic range means so much to so many people, and it is almost a buzzword when it comes to buying a video camera in today's world. I do have a hot take on we put too much emphasis on dynamic range, and there is a lot more other features that make a camera great, but that will be saved for a total of a video. What dynamic range does give us though, is the optimal sensitivity for our camera sensor, or in other words, the native ISO. This allows us to have maximum latitude. It is the perfect middle ground where your camera can see into the most highlights, the brightest bright parts of your image, while at the same time, seeing all the way down into those dark areas and those shadows. But what I find that not many people do talk about is how to control dynamic range to your advantage. What if you wanted to see even more into those highlights or you was willing to sacrifice one section of the image to have more detail in a different part of the image. Before we get into that, I need you to do one thing and that is please hit that subscribe button. I'm coming up to the end of my first ever year on YouTube and I'm absolutely loving it. The more subscribers and views I get, the more time I can spend making videos just like this one. Right, let's get into sacrificing and adjusting dynamic range to give us an advantage when capturing video. I came across this method of exposing images a few times before it actually clicked. What helped me make this really sink in was seeing those graphical images that manufacturers create for their cameras. Now, on screen now, I've got the one for the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame. You can get these for whatever camera you own, whether that's Sony, Panasonic. Most manufacturers will provide a graph that looks pretty similar to this. So what this graph aims to do is inform us about the latitude provided at different levels of ISO. Down the vertical side of these graphs, we normally have stops of light. Now you have zero for like perfect exposure and minor stops are going into the dark area and plus stops are going into the brighter areas of the image. Across the horizontal line at the bottom, here is where we will have our different levels of ISO inside whatever camera we are referring to. You can see here across the top of this graph from Blackmagic, they state that this camera has 13.5 stops of dynamic range, no matter what ISO we place the camera at. So knowing this, all we are doing when changing our ISO is just changing the middle point between the dark section and the bright section of our image. At the lowest possible, which is 100 ISO, on this Blackmagic camera, we have 9.6 stops in the dark areas, but only 3.9 stops in the lighter areas of the frame. But in 1000 ISO, we have 7.3 stops in the lighter parts of the image. So let's get back to the question of what makes a native ISO range. It is basically balance. It is where the middle sensitivity of your camera allows for the maximum in dark areas and the maximum in the brighter areas. It's basically the perfect middle ground and there is a good reason that this exists. A great example of when you should use native ISOs would be like an interview where there's a window in the background on a nice sunny day that you are trying to battle. If you look at this talking head that you're watching right now, there's a window just here it is like dusk-ish here when I'm recording, so there is not too much light coming through that window. But with me using this Panasonic S5 II in its vlog setting, capturing at native ISO, this is allowing me to capture the widest dynamic range between, say, the darkest parts of the image 
and also the brightest parts of the image. So knowing and understanding your native ISO of your camera is always super important. But what if you're in a full light controlled environment? No windows, maybe it's a set build, maybe it's just a shot where you have full controlling of every single light bulb, key light, fill light, hair light, backlight, whatever it is, you have full control of that situation. Does it make sense to carry on shooting at your native ISO when you can manipulate it, giving you more detail in the brighter parts of your image or even more detail in the dark parts of your image? This is where it gets difficult for beginners though because your natural instinct when exposing in a dark scenario is to raise up your ISO. Referring back to that graph from Blackmagic, you can see the more we raise our ISO, the less clean detailed stops in the darkness we will receive. It makes much more sense to lower the ISO, providing us with much more clean detailed shadows. To make this much more clearer, I want to set up my own Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K and referring to the graph, shoot some test shots to see what the results look like. So here's a quick setup I have done in my office. I put some practicals in the background. I'm using an Amaron F22 as a key light and an aperture 6-X for a backlight. And there is a Nova just off to the side of the frame behind a magic cloth, acting as a bit of a fill for me and also bringing up the ambience of the room. I have my camera set to 400 ISO, which is the native ISO on this camera, giving us the most range into the highlights and the shadows. I think this image looks great. There is nothing really wrong with it, but we can definitely make it better. Everything bright in this frame is pretty much under my full control. So coming back to our graph from Blackmagic, on the camera, why don't we try lowering our ISO to giving us more clean stop in the darker areas of the image. So here I have turned up the lighting around the room and lowered my ISO in camera. This has resulted in cleaning up the shadows and for me creating a much more pleasing image. There is a bit of a balance you need to learn to ride here when doing this. The last thing we want to do here is underexpose our image. You may be someone who likes noise and grain and aesthetic in those images, but even that said, I would much prefer to shoot clean in camera and later in post put some sort of film grain on there as Yes, cameras are getting really organic and nice when it comes to grain, but they are still digital cameras. And this method also works on the flip side of exposure. And even more so, this is why ND filters create such cinematic video. When you're in a situation where there is too much light coming into your camera sensor, the last thing you want to do is lower your ISO. And that is the first thing beginners tend to do when they're outside and it's a sunny day and they do not have an ND filter. The main takeaway here from this video should be that there is no right or wrong when it comes to setting your ISO. You need to understand when is the right time to use the native ISO to your advantage and also when to manipulate that dynamic range to give you super cleaned detail imagery. Before you know it, you'll be exposing it like a cinematographer yourself. And if you thought that technique was important, you should definitely learn this one right here.